This lesson is 10-7. We're going to take a look at the summation of arithmetic or geometric sequences. So in today's lesson, you will be able to find the summation of an arithmetic or geometric sequence. So here are the formulas. Just going to get straight to it. Instead of spending all the time trying to be able to derive these, it all just comes down to, do you remember how to create the formula or not? These two right here are the common formulas, where in this instance, that's your first term. Um, n is whatever the highest value is, whatever that, that n value is, right? Because if you look at it, it starts at from 1 all the way to that value right there is n. But let's pick this apart. So in this first example here, I have to determine if it's going to be geometric or arithmetic. Now here's a hint. With arithmetic, it looks like because it says 5n plus 3, well this 5 times n means that every single time that I plug in a value for n, it's going to go up by 5. Well that makes it arithmetic. Now just to contrast it, let's look at this one. Well, because of that n, that means that every time that that n goes up, I'm going to multiply by 1 half again, right? Because n squared, it would, or if n was 2, it would be 1 half squared, 1 half times 1 half. If it was to the third power, 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, right? So that means it's going to be geometric. So let's look back at this one. So I know that it's going to be arithmetic. So that means that I'm going to use this formula, n times my first term plus my a sub n term, so my nth term, all divided by 2. So this right here is going to find me the summation. So all I need to do is just find the three values that it's asking for. So my n, well, n is 10. This is my n value here. Then, because it's how many turns we're getting there, it starts at 1, and we're going to go all the way to n. Then my a sub 1 just means I'm going to plug in 1 in for my value. It's my first term. So 5 times 1 plus 3, that's going to give me 8. And then my a sub n, that means that I'm going to plug in whatever the nth value is going to be. So that means I plug in 10. So 5 times 10 plus 3. And so that's going to give me 53. So I have all three values, so now I can just plug it into the formula. So you get 10 times, now my first value, 8, plus my nth term, which is 53, all of that over 2. Now we just enter that in our calculator. Now you can kind of simplify it a little bit, right? The 10 and the 2 can cancel out, so we get 5, 8 plus 53, we can combine those together. And so that's going to give us, what, 61. So now we just get 5 times 61. But now we can enter that in our calculator, and that's going to give us 305. So as a recap, we just need to find the values in the formula. So in this instance, the values were n, my first term, my last term. And so that's what I did here. I found my n, which is 10. Then my first term which is 8, and then my nth term, so we plugged in that value, which is 53, and then we just plug it into the formula. Now, just to clarify one little thing, these sequences, we're starting at 1. So if we start at 1, we're counting up to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, well, that gives us 10 values, which is why my n is 10. If this first value started at 5 and ended at 10, right? Well, how many terms do I have? Well, it would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 6. So then this value would end up becoming 6. So it's, it's the number of values that we're counting, essentially. But all of these that we're looking at are going to start at 1. Okay, so we already established that this one is geometric. So if it's geometric, the formula that I'm going to use is going to be my first term 
times one minus r to the n over one minus r. So I have to identify what my a is, which is my first term. So if I wanted to say a sub one, that's okay. I need to identify what my r is and what is the n, how many terms do I have? Well, once again, because we're starting at one, n is just that number there, so that's 10. The common ratio, which is what's being multiplied every time, that's going to be this value here, so that's gonna be one half. And then my first term means I got to plug in one into the equation, so I get one half to the first power, which is going to give me one half. So now I just need to plug everything into the formula. So a times one minus one half to the tenth over one minus one half. This is gonna take a lot of cleaning up and we have to have to have to have to be careful. If you have one of those special calculators that can separate and create fractions, great. Lucky you, if you don't, we have to be a little bit careful here because if we're not careful, it's gonna mess us up. So what I got entering this into my calculator, 0.999 or depending on what kind of calculator you have, 1023 over 1024. Both of those are gonna be correct answers. Now, it's an approximation, it's not exactly. One thing that we need to take a look at, or at least what it should look like in your calculator, is you're gonna have one half, and then times, there's that bigger parentheses. Now, the top, one minus one half to the 10th, divided by now the bottom, one minus one half, and then close that parenthesis. That's how it should look like in your calculator if you can't do that whole special fraction thing, and you should get the 0.199 or the 1023 over 1024. Let's look at another one. So for this one here, it is the arithmetic sequence. So because it is an arithmetic sequence, that means that our formula is going to be n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. Now I'm going to give you guys a moment to go ahead and solve this one. So now going over this one here, my n is going to be 20. My first term, that means I got to plug in 1 into my formula, 2 times 1 minus 1, so that's going to give me 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then my a sub n, in this case, which is a sub 20, that's going to be 2 times 20 minus 1, so that's 40 minus 1, which is 39. So now I want to plug those values in. So n times a sub 1 plus a sub 20 all over 2. And so the 2 and the, that will cancel out, so I get 10. 1 plus 39 is 40. And so 10 times 40 is going to give me 400. Next problem. We should identify this one as geometric. Now I'm going to give you guys a moment to come up with the formula and to solve it. Okay, so going over this one, the formula should be a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So I need to find what my common ratio is. Well, what am I multiplying by every time? So my r is going to be 3 halves. My first term, which means I need to plug in 1 into my formula. So that's going to be 3 halves. And then the n is going to be five. So now plugging these in, three halves times one minus three halves to the fifth, all over one minus three halves. So once again, that's something that you're going to want to enter into your calculator. And when you enter that in your calculator, 
you're going to either get 633 over 32, or the decimal approximation is going to be approximately 19.781. So to conclude today's lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about how to find the summation of arithmetic and geometric sequences. Now it's important to remember the formulas because once they're memorized, it's literally just find the elements, you plug them in, and you have your answer. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.